Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the solubility product constants. Um, the constants is going to be KSP and the molar solubility. So whenever we talk about uh, solids, we're going to be writing their equilibrium constant expression in the form of KSP, also called the solubility product constant. It's very similar to just what we have written for the KAs and the KBs, but now we're just talking about the salt that does not dissolve in water too much so we're trying to figure out how much they dissolve in water based on their KSP values so let's go ahead and learn how to write down the KSP expression first suppose I have this reaction where um, AgCl so, so uh, silver 1 chloride solid so it dissolves partially in water so when it dissolves partially in, in water it's going to go ahead and make Ag one plus aqueous and it's going to make Cl minus aqueous. Now when I'm writing the KSP expression or the equilibrium constant expression for this particular one, remember we only include the aqueous in a heterogeneous equilibrium. We don't really include the solids and the liquids. We could include the gases as well, but we're not going to have any gas in there. It's just going to be the aqueous and the solids. So your KSP expression for this particular one is actually going to be the concentration of silver and the concentration of Cl minus. So that's how you're going to be writing that. And a lot of time you're going to be given the KSP value and the KSP value for the silver just happen to be 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10. So if you know the KSP value, you can calculate so-called the molar solubility. Now, anytime you're trying to figure out the molar solubility, let me just copy that down here, figure out how much of these Ag1 plus and Cl minus you're going to be making once this AgCl dissolve in the water. And... Uh, you can easily say that, okay, I'm going to have one-to-one -one mole ratios of both the silver 1 plus and chloride 1 minus here. So I'll go ahead and write down X here and X here. So X of these are going to be your molar solubility. And in addition to that, these X values will also be the concentrations of this Ag1 plus and Cl minus. Now your molar solubility and the concentration of your products they're not always the same. They would be the same if it's only like one-to-one -one mole ratio throughout. And I'll take another example when they are not going to be the same. So let me go ahead and uh, write those up here. So going back into this KSP expression, I'll go ahead and write down X times X, and that's going to be equal to the KSP value, which is 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10. So go ahead and figure out what X is going to be here, and we can sure do that by taking the square root on both sides. It's going to be 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, molar. So this is indeed going to be your molar solubility. Because uh, this is being expressed in the form of moles over liters or the concentration. And this is also going to be the concentrations for your products because remember the X here does represent the silver 1 plus and chloride ion concentration here as well. Now let me take another example where you know your molar solubility is not going to be necessarily the same as that of the concentration. So suppose I have a uh, salt um, that I'm going to be talking about here and um, I'll say it's a CaF2 solid. So when I go ahead and write the equilibrium here, I'll have some of that broken into ions. So I'll be making Ca2 plus and 2F1 minus aqueous. And now when I'm writing the KSP expression or the equilibrium constant expression for this particular one, it's actually going to be concentration of Ca2 plus times the concentration of fluoride squared. So remember, whatever the coefficients you have, that becomes the power. That's just usually what we do in case of these uh, equilibrium constant expressions. Now, let's go back and figure out what's going to be these concentrations, the concentration of calcium 2 plus and fluoride with respect to one another. 
So when you lose some of this calcium fluoride, you're going to be making some calcium 2 plus. And I can literally say that's going to be your X here. And then what's going to be the concentration of F minus in that case? Well, remember your calcium and your fluorine or fluoride rather is one to two mole ratio. So if you make X concentration for Ca2 plus, you should be making two X for the F minus. So that's one thing you got to be really careful with. So then when I go ahead and put those down in the values here, so your KSP for the calcium fluoride is 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10. And now we know the equilibrium concentration of Ca2 plus would be X. And your equilibrium concentration of F minus is going to be 2X. And remember to square that. So remember this 2 that's along with the 2X in case of uh, F minus is also going to be squared. So when you do your math, this is going to be 4 x cube and this is going to be 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, do your math here, figure out what x is going to be. So this is going to be 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10. Divide that by 4 and you can take the cube root on both sides to get rid of uh, this x cube term there, term there. So your x here comes out to be 3.32 times 10 to the minus 4. So whatever you get, uh, whatever x uh, you get here, that's indeed going to be your molar solubility. But then the question is, what's going to be the concentrations of your um, calcium and your fluorine here? And then that's when you got to go back and figure out what these values are. So your calcium 2 plus is still going to be the same as whatever X you found here because X does represent the calcium there. So this is still going to be 3.32 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 4. Well, what's going to be the concentration of F minus in that case? Well, it's 2X. It's going to be 2 times whatever the X value you got. So 2 times 3.32 times 10 to the minus 4. So that's going to be uh, 6.64 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. So that's how you're going to be finding their final concentrations. But a lot of time your question is going to be the molar solubility. And your molar solubility is going to be basically whatever the x value you're going to get at the end of the day. So this is how you're going to be doing in a simple KSP problem. Now let's talk about what really affect the solubilities. Now we have learned back in earlier chapters where uh, when we have a salt and how you're going to be increasing the solubility of a salt is generally by the temperature. If you increase the temperature, you would be able to increase the solubility to some extent. So as your temperature goes up, your solubility also increases and that's mostly true. It's not always true because there are some exceptions. There are some salts when you heat them up, their solubility drops down. But uh, for the most part, your solids will increase in their solubility when the temperature goes up. Now, let's talk about the effect of pH. pH does play an important role sometimes, not always, especially when you have um, some of these ions that are going to be made or have the acidic or basic nature. For example, suppose I'm looking at this particular salt, MgOH2, solid. So it's got some uh, solubility issues. Uh, so it's going to be partially dissolving in uh, neutral water. So it's going to be Mg2 plus here. And then it's got 2OH minus aqueous. So the reason why this is going to be greatly dependent on the pH because you're actually producing the OH minus here. If you were not producing the OH minus, then this would not be uh, be affected by the pH. Now, what happens when your pH goes up? So if pH goes up, so this arrow going up means it increases, then what's happening to the OH concentration? When you're increasing the pH, your OH minus or your hydroxide ion, uh, ion concentration also increases. So if your hydroxide ion 
is increasing, that's like saying common ion. So you got an extra OH minus already present in the solution. And as a result, this equilibrium will shift to the left. So that goes back to the Le Chatelet principle. So it will shift to the left in that case. Now the opposite can be said if your pH drops. If your pH drops, that means uh, your OH minus concentration is going to decrease. And you can also say your H3O plus concentration is going to increase. So if you're increasing your acid, what's that going to do to the OH minus? Well, it's going to start reacting with that OH minus. So it's like saying that now in this particular equilibrium, you're taking away the OH minus or you're decreasing the concentration of OH minus. So if you're decreasing the concentration of OH minus, it's going to shift the reaction to the right side. So it shifts to right. So in the previous case, when it shifts to the left, which means uh, you're going to be making more solid or magnesium hydroxide uh, precipitates here. So in that case, your solubility will be decreasing. But now in the second case, all of a sudden you have this uh, hydroxide, more hydroxide being, uh, more magnesium hydroxide being dissolved in the water because you lost some of the OH minus after reacting with the hydronium. So in order to recover any lost OH minus, you should be making more of the hydroxides from the magnesium hydroxide solid. So in that case, your solubility is going to increase. So that's how you're going to be looking at the decrease and the increase in the solubilities. Well, the common, common ion, anytime you have it in there, is going to decrease the solubility. And I can take an example of maybe um, AGCl. So suppose I got an AGCl and I know if I just write up in a simple equilibrium equation for it, it's going to be breaking into Ag plus aqueous and it's going to be breaking into Cl minus aqueous. Now, what happens if you already have um, some common ion present? So let's say if you already have, uh, we can say NaCl present in the solution. So if there is already NaCl present in the solution, so the Cl minus is going to be the common ion in that case. So that's like saying you're increasing the concentration of the Cl minus, what's going to happen to this equilibrium. So according to the Le Chatelet principle, if you increase the concentration of this Cl minus, it's going to shift to the left side. So if you shift to the left side, you're going to be having less AgCl dissolved in the water. So in that case, your solubility is going to decrease. So first of all, I'll write down your equilibrium shift to left. And it's going to be decreasing the solubility. OK, so that's how you're going to be looking at that. And then in addition to that, you can also have a complex ion formation. So sometimes when you actually make your um, ions from the equilibrium equation, like this one right there, it could also react with something else to make a complex ion. And now if I take a simple example, suppose I make this Ag plus and Cl minus from this AgCl solid, but then if I have, suppose I already got some solution present in uh, some sort of uh, chemical present in the solution. And in this case, that chemical is gonna be NH3. So what happens, this NH3 actually can make a complex ion with the silver. So this NH3 and silver react with one another to make a complex ion of Ag NH3 2 plus. So since it's making that particular complex ion there, it means as soon as you make some Ag plus here, you're going to be using that Ag plus to react with the NH3. So another way of saying you're actually going to be decreasing the concentration of this Ag 
plus if you're decreasing the concentration from that equilibrium this equilibrium is going to shift to the right side and if it shifts to the right side you're going to be dissolving more AgCl in the solution so I can say the equilibrium will shift to right and then it's going to be increasing the solubility in that case So if you have any questions on any of those, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.